really want to express my thanks today to those trade unions on the national and the local level who've given so much support now to the campaign against climate change, and in particular the work we've been doing around, as John McDonnell says, the question of a million climate jobs. So I do want to formally thank the, the CWU that represents communication workers, the TSSA representing sections of the rail, uh, the UCU uh, lecturers in further and higher education, and most particularly the PCS who represent civil servants who put time, energy, resources, and money into uh, into the uh, into the campaigns we do, and the campaign against climate change, uh, climate jobs pamphlet that's been on sale today is the second edition. It's the expanded, updated edition of a pamphlet that we produced uh, a year ago, um, and we did that because actually. Most importantly, we sold out in the first edition because it has sold thousands of copies up and down this country and, uh, and internationally. And I believe as a result of the work we've done in the trade union group and the wider campaign against climate change, we got to the situation where the umbrella body, the Trade Union Congress of Britain, that represents 7.5 million organised workers in this country, supported at its last conference in Manchester only a month ago, a call for a million climate jobs. That's a tremendously powerful position for us as an environmental movement to be in. But that said, I do think for all of us, it changed on the 20th of October, when George Osborne got up to the dispatch box in the Houses of Parliament and talked about an £87 billion pounds worth of programme of cuts, ushering in the austerity um, programmes that the condemned government wants. I think everything changed for us as the environmental movement and certainly for the trade for the trade union movement. They are interested and their, their, their programme isn't about whatever they say, whatever the rhetoric you hear on the, on the television and the radio. Their programme isn't about closing the deficit. Their programme is about reshaping our economy and their world in the interest of their profit, in the interest of the rich and powerful. And if you don't believe me, look what they are doing to our countryside. The RSPB and in about 23 other environmental organisations produced a report called, called Loads of the Austerity Countryside. It's an amazing report because what it talks about, the way that the plans that they have for the, the, the countryside are about reshaping the organisations and the bodies that do things like look after breeding birds, that keep the canals clear, that keep the public footpaths open. The bodies like this that are having savage cuts that will mean that they can no longer do the work that they, that they need. It's a tiny amount of money. It doesn't save anything. It's, it's, it's nothing in terms of the deficit. It's 0.25% of DEFRA's overall budget. Organisations like English Nature will leave, lose up to half of their workforce. And I believe if you take that alongside with the recent announcement this week of the way they want to privatise the very forests and the woods of this, uh, of this country, they have to rewrite laws going back to Magna Carta if they do this. This is about them saying we want the countryside to be opened up to exploitation and profit. We want the countryside to be the realm of the rich because they'll have their country estates, they'll have their lands that they can visit. The rest of us, well, we go has to be closed. We won't be able to get there because there'll be private lands and cut off to the to the private uh, the private countries. And I think it's things like that. Never mind the massive cuts that will mean hospital closures, the massive cuts that mean crashes in the places where you know the education service that I work in are closed. That mean that things like your kids can't afford to go to university. Those are the cuts that are meaning that already hundreds of thousands of people I think are starting to think I want to do something. I want to get onto the streets. We saw it last weekend as as, as somebody said earlier on, 50,000 people on the streets. We sit today, a little reflection of it. We six, I looked at the Right to Work campaign website today, 16 Vodafone offices have been closed up and down the country. Why? I mean, in one sense, it doesn't mean much. It's because people are sick to death of the idea that a powerful multinational like Vodafone can get away with six billion pounds worth of tax credits when they're putting away housing benefit from the poorest in our society. After 15 years of my life as a trade unionist, I'm sure the people in this country for many, many more. I've been on the defensive. We've all been on the defensive. We've signed the petitions that said, don't close my hospital. We've gone on the picket lines and say, don't take away these jobs, or don't cut this salary, don't cut this wages. And actually, what I think we've got today, with the TUC supporting the call for a million climate jobs, with it being one of the key demands of the campaign against climate change, is us have, we now have an opportunity to say there's an alternative. There's something positive that we can do. It's not all about doom and gloom. It's not all about stopping this cut or this closure or this shutdown. It's just about saying actually we've got an alternate way of doing things. We've got a new way that calls for investment, green investment that will help save the planet. We've got a new programme of jobs that will change the way we live our lives, will change the way we organise our cities, will change the way our working lives are, 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 are done. And just, if you read, I mean, I do encourage people, not just because I'm the treasurer of the campaign against climate change and trade union group, please do buy the pamphlet and read it. Because part, partly it's inspiring. It's about saying actually we can organise things very, very differently. I mean, earlier we heard John Stewart at the Impact 
talk about how we need an alternative way of organising society. But actually imagine the differences our society would make if the government was prepared to put millions of pounds into changing our, uh, our jobs and our infrastructure. Just imagine what it would be like in London if there was a genuine mass public transport system. Not one for run for profits, but actually one run in the interest of people who need to commute to work or get the kids to school or whatever. There'd be less accidents on the road. There'd be less children um, knocked over on the way to school. It'd be safer and nicer to drive a bicycle to work. You know, there'll be, there'll be less pollution and less rubbish and less waste and so on. Is that five minutes? It's five minutes, thank you. And, uh, and, but also, of course, there'll be massive reduction in the amount of emissions and, uh, and pollution and, uh, and carbon dioxide going into the atmosphere. Uh, so think about a public works programme that systematically, up and down the country, says we're going to insulate all the old, leaky, terrible buildings that have been thrown up by governments over decades. Think about that employing large numbers of the young people who are graduating from college today with no hope of a job. Let's say, let's, we're going to train you to be someone who goes and systematically builds up and insulates houses and offices. They'll be warmer. Those buildings will be nicer places to work and to live. There'll be less pensioners who die every year of hypothermia because their houses will be jobs for the unemployed building workers or the apprentices coming out of colleges. All these things, all these things are positive. And people say, well, you know, it's pie in the sky. In the 1950s, a Tory government made sure that every single coal-burning hearth in, uh, in this country was able to burn smokeless fuel. They did it with a massive centralised injection of cash from the government. A systematic number of, uh, of building workers went up and down the country, knocked on every single door, and they did those, those changes. But we're talking about something on a much, much bigger scale. Renewable energy. If, and the report says this, if we, if we introduced 260,000, if we employed 260,000 workers in renewable energy, making and maintaining offshore wind turbines, in, within 10 years we could move to a situation of getting 500 terawatts of electricity um, uh, potential from, uh, from offshore, offshore wind. That's 100 terawatts more than we currently need to light the lights and heat the houses of the buildings that we currently live in. Actually, you think about a programme that says that to the unemployed today, three million or so on the dollar. Actually, we want a programme that will take a quarter of a million of you, train you up, put you in jobs, and, uh, and, uh, and, and do that. That's a tremendously positive way to start to reach out to those people now who worry about their futures, worry about their kids' futures, and, uh, and so on. And so that's the, that's the win-win situation. This section of the, of the day is called win-win. And that's the win-win the thing, actually. It's a positive agenda, not just, just in terms of the climate, but to all those people who worry about their futures and, uh, and worry about their, and their children and, uh, and so on. And I, I, I do this speech often. I go, I go, obviously I do it differently in different places, but, you know, I, <laughs> otherwise I get bored and I'm like, no. But, um, you know, you go, you go to, uh, you go to um, different trade union branches, and often people say, well, you know, this is all very new and so on. I do say to them, look, you know, you have to come out. We need you very much in the environmental movement. We need your organisation and your power as workers. We need you to come and join the protest the, the 4th of December in, uh, in London. We want trade union balance from all the different trade unions there saying actually we care about the uh, future of the planet. But I also say to the environmentalists, actually it's really, really important that you start now to support the trade union movement and the workers who are going to be facing job cuts, pay cuts, and, uh, and so on. That means that every time there's an anti cuts demonstration in your city, like Caroline Lucas going down to Brighton now to raise the question of climate in the context of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of Tory cuts, actually, you have to go down there. If there's a picket line in your local area, as John McDonald says, you need to go down there, you need to say to those workers there, actually, there's another agenda, there's an alternative, there's a different way of doing things, it's about protecting your job, protecting the conditions, and saving the planet. We can't have, we've lived too long with a chasm between the environmental sector movement over here and the working class, the trade union movement over, 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 over there. <laughs>
if you look at them, the front bench of the condemned parliament, if you look at them, they're about one thing. They're about having their system capitalism to make those profits, to get the tiniest minority people wealthier and wealthier and wealthier. Our agenda is about the opposite, isn't it? Our agenda is about saying we can create a world where there are jobs for everyone, where the planet is safe, because actually we're in the interest of people and planet, not profit.